Hello, my name is Wally Block. I'm a professor in the Biomedical Engineering Department, and I'm here today to describe how to write a good progress report. We'll discuss why writing progress reports are, are a useful experience, and then what the content of a good progress report would include. I have some slides here. Uh, on the second slide, describe the purpose of the progress report. A progress report forces you as a team to provide a team snapshot. Because you only provide one progress report, you need to work together to see that you put down the information that you all agree upon. So this gives you an opportunity to see if others in the team see the progress that you're making and that others are making uh, in the same light that you do. It allows you to clarify what your current achievements are and what the remaining hurdles are. This is a good opportunity then for you to see, uh, again, where you are within the team so that you're not surprised at the peer review at the end of the uh, semester. Perhaps the most useful thing of the progress reports are to max maximize the usefulness of class time. It allows your advisor to look at uh, what you've done before the class period so that when you get to the class period, you can just discuss the pertinent things of where you've been and she or he could then describe uh, or talk with you about what difficulties you have uh, remaining. This also provides a real life experience that we can't simulate in a didactic course. If you take a job in an industrial setting, you'll be surprised at the amount of time you spend describing um, what you've accomplished, what you need to do, uh, and what your difficulties are. In large organizations where you have varied skills and a lot of varied uh, organizations, marketing and service and sales and manufacturing, you need to be very specific about what you're doing, uh, what your requirements are, what your testing is, uh, and what you're achieving so that in today's world where you often have to get it right on the first time that that actually happens. So uh, these, this allows you to get an experience of what it is like to sync up a team uh, or a project. Even in graduate school working for an advisor, many advisors will have you write up weekly a short progress report to describe what you've achieved and uh, what hurdles you have so that your meetings with your advisor will go um, smoother. And even in med school, uh, or working as a physician, you'll be surprised at the amount of specificity you need to uh, report on your interactions with patients. So again, this has really pertinent real-world experiences. On the third slide, uh, I'll describe some of the content of a good progress report. Now, these materials are also described in a PDF um, on the web page for the course, describing the content of good uh, progress report, and there's a specific example. Much of the information, or at least some of it, is a boilerplate. The title, the team names, uh, the, the, the names of the participants, and the problem st statement. You should work to try to minimize that because your advisor will quickly become familiar with that. You want to devote your space to the really useful information. Next, include a restatement of the team goals from last week. You can just directly copy those because what's going to be useful is to see how, uh, what you've accomplished compared to what your goals were. It's important to be specific, and I should note that you don't have to be verbose to be specific. A statement like, such as, the prototype didn't work is not very useful, uh, or the prototype worked well is also not useful. But a statement, the protocol worked to the testing specifications that we de described in our earlier documentation is very useful. Um, if you can, break down the accomplishments by individuals or subgroups. This allows us to see how you've delegated the task because you can accomplish much more if you smartly delegate and break up the task of the project than if you're all tagging along to each specific subtask. It gives everyone a chance to shine on the project. Next, specify goals for next week. Um, again, can't gauge progress if you're not specific. A goal that we'd like to work on the prototype is not very useful to see whether you've achieved that or not. Perhaps the most important part of the progress report is to describe your current difficulties. Uh, this will be again a starting point for the advisor's meeting during the class period. Uh, finally, on the, uh, the closing items are to provide a project schedule. Again, be specific. Break down the specific tasks into subtasks so you as a team can see how you're doing and your advisor can see how you're doing. The activity section has varying levels of usefulness to the advisors, and it would be useful to talk to your advisor about what they'd like to see in the activities section. 
In the activity section, you write down what each person, um, the specific activities they worked on during the week. Uh, it also has a sum of the hours you worked on the project. This can be useful for you as a team, especially for those students with more experience in the junior and senior level, to gauge how much effort you've put into the class and what effort is needed you know, relative to past experiences to have a successful project. It's also a good sanity check that your advisor will do against your work at the end of the semester when he sees or she sees how the project worked out and what your peers thought of your work. If you put in a large number of hours on something that your peers saw as a failed part of the project, that's an indication that you're not using your time wisely and uh, will be um, taken account into the grading. So again, it provides a feedback of your remaining activity and it provides a sanity check of how you're using your time. Finally, there's a brief section on the expenses to describe what you've spent and how that lines up with your current budget. Um, in the real world, you'll spend a lot more time on this, seeing that your projects are coming in on budget. But here's a small experience to see um, how you're doing with the resources that your client has provided for you. So thanks for uh, taking your time to review this. Again, the materials are on the web page with a sample of a strong progress report and guidelines on writing that progress report. Thanks again.